I, I'm reading from Glenmalure, County Wicklow this afternoon and I wanted to thank um, Roz and Simon Lewis for setting up this series of Irish writers reading from their homes. Um, I'm going to start with a poem uh, from my collection, um, uh, When the Tree Falls. And this collection came out with Blood Axe Books uh, back in September 2019. And uh, the poem I've decided to start with is, um, it was written when my father was very ill towards the end of his life. And um, I wasn't able to be with him because I was abroad at the time. And I think that explains some of the intensity of the emotion in it. Um, but also I was thinking of all the people at the moment who can't be with the people they love when they're in hospital and very ill. So that's why I chose to read this one. That I could. That I could take away from him these long days in the hospital the digging for a vein in his arm, the drip that stops him sleeping, the pain that makes him whisper, Jesus Christ, oh Jesus Christ, that I could take him back to his cobblestones and barn, his rooks in the birch trees, his nettles and ditches, his limestone and bog, that I could find the words to tell him what he will always be. Horse chestnut petals falling pink in the yard. The well hidden in a blackthorn thicket. A summer evening's hush. Cattle standing orange in the shallows. And uh, the second poem I'd like to read um, is also from When the Tree Falls. And it, um, I was thinking about the very well-deserved tributes to all the health professionals at the moment. And it reminded me of when we had uh, what's called a daffodil nurse working with us, a palliative care nurse for the last two, day, two nights of my father's life. And I remember how important she was in our lives and in fact how bereft I felt the morning she left after my father died. So this poem is for all those health professionals. Night Nurse. If he were conscious, he'd urge her to sit beside him for questions about her people over cups of tea. But she says no more than needs to be said as I help her turn him, check for bed sores, connect the morphine pump. She tells me it won't be long, knows when to gather the others. It happens quickly in the end. She leaves us together and when we're ready, helps wash his body. My brother flings the windows open, still dark, the air wetted with frost. Herefords lowing from the slatted sheds, the choir he'd have chosen. She collects her watch, torch and glasses. I don't want her to go when she leaves her home across the curlews. She'll be taking him with her. So I, another poem from the collection, um, I, it was written in the year after my father died and it helped me in my morning to remember a story he used to tell and he said that the first time my mother left me alone with him to mind, for him to mind me, he couldn't get me to stop crying. Um, so uh, lullaby. Try as he might, he couldn't hush the baby's crying. He carried her out to the yard, showed her pullets pecking at scraps, ewes snuffling oats, calves tucked up in straw, but she wouldn't be consoled. 
He sat with her on a sack of barley in the barn, lifted a handful that smelled of molasses and began to speak of reaping, threshing, winnowing grain. Dust and chaff clinging to sweat as they bent to stuck sheaves. He hummed the thrasher's thrumming and by the time he got to the twisters then sent wisps of straw circling like spirits above their heads, she slept. And uh, the, the title of the collection, When the Tree Falls, is metaphoric, but it also, there was a tree that fell across the River Suck um, in the winter after my father died. And uh, I used to, when I was home at weekends, I'd go down and sit there and I was observing uh, what was happening to the river after the tree fell and the difference it made. And I was thinking about how out of great loss, new growth does emerge. And as we will see out of our present uh, crisis. When the tree falls into the river, it slows the current. Water pools in the hollows it makes. Pike and trout find a new place to hide. Beetles, mayfly and mites feed on leaf litter. The mossy trunk lies still as a bridge. A kingfisher settles, watches for minnow. Branches reach for the light, noble with new buds. Okay. Um, Yes, I, I just wanted to take the opportunity to say that next Sunday, 3rd of May, I'll be walking the Miner's Way in a poetry programme on Radio 4. And the Miner's Way is a 19 kilometre uh, waymark trail that goes from Glenmalure to Glendalough to Glendasson, and it joins up these old mining sites. And in the programme, I'll be talking to some neighbours and reading some new poems. And so I thought I'd read one of these poems today. Pit Ponies of Glendasson. Hitched to an eight-hour shift in Britchens, Hames and Traces, they follow the miners' carbide lights, halt under hoppers, turn on a threepence, and lean into their collars to pull the five-wagon train. Low set cobs from the curra, a piebald and two greys. Their hooves fall heavy as hammers on granite. They haul lengths of larch for pit props, pneumatic drills, boxes of gelignite, and from time to time deliver injured men back to daylight. The miners pat their necks in passing and feed them windfall apples, comrades in toil, and the first to stall, legs locked at a sudden rumbling, a change in the air, or the rush of running water. So, um... Recently, uh, Solis Nua, who are the Irish arts organization based in Washington, D.C., who do so much to support Irish artists, um, invited me to record this poem uh, because of its resonance for the times that are in it. Um, but I also want to say that the poem was originally inspired by um, a walk in a forest in northern Spain. And I want to say that because of how badly affected all our friends in Spain have been by the pandemic. And um, 
when I was doing that walk, um, I ran after doing the walk with Isabel that day, I rang our friend uh, Shirley McClure, the poet that night. She was very ill in hospital in Dublin. And I told her about seeing the shepherd with her flock of ewes in the forest. And um, Shirley said, you have to write a poem about this. So this is for Shirley as well as for all of us. When all this is over, We'll follow a path through silver birch and pine. Listen for the shepherd whistling to a flock of pregnant ewes. Look for grasses, herbs trampled under their hooves. Catch the scent of crushed chamomile, lavender, pine. From the mossy mountainside, drink the river's source. And uh, I'm going to read another poem from this uh, chapbook, which is kind of like the size of half a collection. And it is, um, I, I'm choosing this poem because I'm thinking that our lives at the moment are kind of paired back to the essentials for many of us. And that some of those are music and nature and silence. The Pianist. She plays into silence. A harbour at dusk makes wind ripples over the surface until her fingers begin to insist hailstones on the slipway. She dives like a cormorant dives, leaves only a circle of bubbles. We listen for where she'll emerge. Taking our breath, she dives again and again, returns us to quietness. Um, so coming back to um, this collection, then uh, the When the Tree Falls collection, I'd like to read... Um, another poem from it. And I, it's a story my mother uh, told. And I suppose for me, the poem is about what's spoken and not spoken in a long lived love. The Yellow Jumper. They weren't married long when she saw it. A turtleneck jumper in Murray's window. Yellow as happiness as the flash on a goldfinch's wings. She imagined him wearing it at the fairs, standing out from all the rest in their greens and greys. 18 shillings and sixpence, she paid for it on tick, threepence a week. For all that he smiled on his birthday, it remained on the back of the bedroom chair. One day, she folded and packed it in the chest with the spare candles, letters and photographs and the other questions she didn't ask. She likes to think of him there among pens of breeding heifers, weanlings and hoggets, splendid in yellow. And I thought of... Uh, another poem from the river, a poem from the river, my first collection, that I think speaks uh, to that poem and uh, kind of follows it. Back of an envelope. I don't know what's come over your father, my mother says over the phone. He left a note on the back of an envelope, gone herding, won't be long. Where did he think I'd think he was gone? All those years, if I asked where he was going, where he had been, he'd act like I'd tethered him to a post. And then today, he leaves a note. Okay, um, so, oh yes, I'll read uh, another poem uh, from that collection, uh, from the river. Um, 
because I'm just choosing to read it today because the Irish ambassador to the US, Dan Mulhall, uh, read it on Twitter this week and he dedicated it to all the couples who haven't been able to get married, who've had to postpone their marriages. And I thought that was a lovely idea because this is a wedding poem. Um, so it's epithalamium and Love carves a path through fissures, cavities, clay and shale, like an underground stream. Flows over beds of mineral gems, feeds hidden lakes, artesian wells, tumbles out from the side of a hill to run headlong over gravel. Open the channel down to the river, where waters from rills and brooks mingle in the pull of the current. Promise to carry each other until the river reaches the sea. Um, and then uh, I'll read uh, one last poem, but before I read it, I want to... I suppose, thank all of you for listening. I hope there's people listening and that I've done this correctly. Uh, I'm, I was supposed to do it through the holding cell and I'm so grateful to Roz and Simon for setting that up. Um, but also, I just want to acknowledge all the, um, you know, the people who are working in the background to keep getting uh poetry out possibly wider than it's ever been put out before at least in my lifetime there's been a real turning to poetry in this time of crisis and uh, there's an awful lot of people behind that support for poetry but uh, so the last poem I want to read is um I thought, well, what would I read as a last poem? And I wasn't sure, but I was thinking of the rebuilding of the world that's going to have to happen um, after all of this. And how do we rebuild? And I suppose we do it stone by stone, carefully. We look at what we have from before. We look at what we want to do differently. We value the past, but we also uh, create a different future. And uh, so I chose this poem. Dry stone wall. We'll skim the scraw, dig a trench wide and deep to hold the given stone. Lay silver grey against green, rocks with square planes to build off, slivers thin as slate to level in between. We lift the stones, test where they'll nestle into what's already there. Fill the middle with spawns, keep the edge stones from falling in. We'll use old stones, dappled with lichen and moss. Leave gaps to let the wind blow through. Nooks for pennyworth and hearthstone to grow. We'll cover the joins, mine the batter, stack each course till it takes its place between two fields. Keep a few of the finest for the finish, long and flat capstones to span the width. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Um, thank you. Bye.